joining us right here uh, prior to uh, the Thanksgiving week uh, 12 in the National Football League, courtesy of FedEx, is none other than future Hall of Famer Aaron Rodgers. How you doing, Aaron? Good, buddy, and I just can't help but uh, listen to your intro there and wonder yes. uh, who are those those shows that you love to go against? Who, who's the shows you hate the most? <laughs> okay, Aaron. Um, now then, should I give it? Should I give an answer like a professional a quarterback, or should I give an honest answer? What should I do? What do you think? It's your world, man. It's the peacock. It's all brand new. Okay, you can do whatever you want. I'll, I'll just I'll just say you know what, Aaron. It, every show is important. You know, um, I don't really like to give my. Uh, give my opponents anything uh, more than what they need to have. I just need to take care of my show, take it one segment at a time, hope for the best. Um, it is what it is, and I'm only talking about the guys who are here. I'm sorry, I went coach speak there. My bad. How was that? Wow. That was, that was impressively bad. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, I want to beat Cowherd and Rome's ass every single day. Is that better? Is that better? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. My guys are clapping, so they're they're appreciative. They're appreciative. Yeah, I've, you know, I circle this on my calendar every single day. You know what I mean? The Rich Eisen show. Um, do you do that for Bears Week, Aaron? I don't know about that. I think I definitely look at uh, when we're playing in Chicago. Probably the coldest I've been in my life on a football field has been in Chicago a couple times. So I always look and make sure uh, – that's the first place I'd look uh, when the schedule does come out this year, as opposed to years past where we've gotten kind of a reprieve by playing them earlier in the season. Um, we have them towards the end. So we know that's going to be nice and cold down in Chicago in week, uh, what, 16, 17? Yes, 17. that's right. That's week 17. Could be, could be game 256, potentially. I don't know if that really will be it. But, you know, um, there's a lot of football left to be played. This past weekend – uh, in Indianapolis. What did you say to Valdez Scantling after the game, Aaron? Uh, not a whole lot. I mean, look, he was disappointed. He was, uh, you know, bummed out for sure. We've all been there before. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, he didn't intentionally, you know, try and turn the ball over there. Uh, I just reminded him how important he was to get us in position to even send it to overtime. Um, and just kind of hold on that feeling. I think a lot of times uh, with emotion, we try and maybe run from it too much or or whatever. And I think it's good to embrace those times uh, when we're when we're emotional to really feel what it feels like to uh, to have that disappointment and sit with it. And then, and then after you've processed it, to move on. And I think that's a part of growth is processing those emotions and then uh, sitting with them, feeling them, and then moving forward and. Uh, and leaving those behind. And it just seems, though, that your team is still – it's still clicking. I, I mean, I, I I look at, you know, a game, and obviously the result isn't the way you were looking at it. Uh, but it, it does seem to me that you are clicking offensively. You've got Tunyon, uh, which I did not know rhymed with Funyon until he said pretty much the same thing a few weeks ago. Um, but it seems to me that you, you've got uh, a considerable championship team in front of you Similar to, to last year, w w would you say that this team is in a better position than last year or just compare it, if you wouldn't mind, from your perspective uh, to what we saw from a team last year that was almost the one seed? Yeah, yeah, we were a couple inches from being the one seed. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because I, I feel like our teams are so different, even though the personnel is almost exactly the same. Okay. Um, uh, I just think that offensively, we've been helped by the second year in the system and some growth from some important players, um, you know, like uh, Robert Tunyon, not Tunyon, yep. as we all learned. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Elton Jenkins, who did a really nice job at center for us when Corey went out uh, a couple of days ago. Um, Billy Turner, who's moved from right guard to right tackle and been very effective for us. Um, Lucas Patrick, who's moved in the starting lineup and done a really, really good job. Other than that, it's a lot of the same guys. Jamal Williams, I think, came back and has been a bigger contributor for us, especially in the past game. I was teasing with him all offseason about his beautiful uh, posts on Instagram where he was running all over the field, running like, uh, you know, 40 yard deep, you know, post corners and making <laughs> these catches and stuff. But he showed up in incredible shape and has been a big contributor. So I think the personnel is very similar. I think we've gotten jumps from certain guys on offense and just we've all felt a little more comfortable in the system in year two. 
I think on defense, uh, there was a lot of encouraging things on Sunday. Um, from uh, the energy, I think, that we played with, uh, forcing a couple turnovers. It was a little bit of an anomaly game for us on offense, turned the ball over three times, and obviously we turned over on special teams. But the second half, especially the third quarter, went really uh, poorly for us. We had six plays and then didn't really get the ball back until eight minutes left in the fourth um, and put together a good drive and then didn't convert on the fourth and one and then had to you know, go 90 yards to, uh, to get it to overtime. But um, I like our team a lot. I like the character of the team. I think it's going to be important uh, six games for us. So we got three of those are division games. And then we have a division leader uh, in Philly, uh, Carolina, and then obviously Tennessee, who's been playing really, really well this season. So we're going to find out a lot about our team in the last six weeks. We usually do. It's uh, the weather gets cold. Um, It's uh, the physicality of the game really gets uh, exposed or heightened or highlighted. And... uh, It'll be interesting, uh, interesting month and a half. A few minutes left with Aaron Rodgers here on the Rich Eisen Show. Do you? How do you watch a Monday night game like last night? Uh, obviously, I'm assuming you watch it. Um, and and if so, do you watch it like you're watching film, or you're watching the, just the quarterbacks? You're watching concepts. What are you watching? Pass pass rush. How do you watch a game like last night, Aaron? I didn't watch it. Come Rich. on now. I didn't see one minute of it. Come on now. You don't. Not see a minute of it. What are you doing on a Monday night? Instead. Well, uh, I'm relaxing then. I'm uh, enjoying uh, enjoying my time, reading a good book. What are you reading? I'm um, getting to bed early. It was a, it was a late night uh, Sunday, later okay. night. You know, we got back at 10, and you can never really fall asleep after a game, whether it's an afternoon game or a night game. So, um, so Mondays and Tuesdays are about, uh, you know, really you know, getting my mind and body back. So, um you know, if I want to get to bed early on a Monday, I usually uh, usually don't watch the game. So that's what happened last night. So you, you there was no curiosity factor. Uh, Brady versus Rams. Rams. Um, you know who? Maybe you see either one of these teams. You obviously have already seen Tampa, but no curiosity factor in watching a football game at all. Oh, night. I mean, I definitely. I, I at one point, I think about eight thirty, I checked. Uh, you know, I checked what the score was on my phone, but uh, but no, I mean, I'm sure I'll. At some point, see this one on film and uh, no. get a chance to look at it. Then. What are you reading? Then what are you reading? Uh, I'm I'm reading a lot of books. I'm reading a book uh, about uh, the dream world right now about dreaming. It's called the history of dreaming. So very interesting. Why about uh, different cultures? Okay. About different cultures and how they they uh, they look at the dream uh, the dream world. Um, you say why? Yeah, why? Yeah, what do you, what interests you about? Yeah. That? Everything about the just the basic uh, lucidity of dreams uh, that that I uh, often experience, and, and uh, I think it's interesting to hear perspectives about how ancient cultures viewed it, and and, uh, and how present day uh, uh, smart people uh, look at uh, look at the dream world. So, um, do you do you dream of football, Aaron? And, and this is a way for you to decipher what you're seeing, or other stuff? Oh, sometimes, yeah, definitely, yeah. Sometimes I have uh, have some of those. Type of dreams. A lot of times they're more nightmares. Like, uh, you know, you have a dream where you uh, uh, it's game day and you're not at the stadium and, and you don't know why you're not there and uh, you can't get there. Um, that's a, that's a nightmare. Or you just you don't know, have your pads and pants or whatever it might be and you're going out in the field. Uh, that that's definitely happened before. Or you know you have some weird dream where you're uh, playing in a different uniform and it's very confusing and different coaches and. You don't, you know, or you're playing for your the Packers and it's, you don't recognize anybody on the team. Yeah, those are interesting. <laughs> this is amazing. So how do you, uh, and then we'll get to FedEx. Uh, how do you decipher that? I love this. This is amazing. I could talk about this literally for the I next two hours. But how, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think the, the, the better ones, are, you know, the more decipherable ones are maybe where you, um, you're in situations where they're past, um, or present uh, that happened from the day. I mean, the, the beauty about dreams is a lot of times you might uh, be talking to someone or thinking about someone uh, that maybe you have a, you know, a childhood friend or something, and then you have a dream and they're in the dream. Like that, that, those are always fun, fun ones to try and decipher. Or you, you had a conversation about uh, you know hiking to a waterfall, and then the dream is all about you know that uh, experience. Right. I just I find the. Uh, 
I find the dream world very fascinating. I always have a dream that I always have a dream that I have not studied for a test. I'm back in college. I'm about to fail this test, and everything that's happened in my life since then is not going to be because of it. Literally, and I wake up. I, that's a recurring dream of mine, Aaron. I didn't think I'd share anything like that with you today, but you brought it up, so that's it. See, you never know where it's going to go, buddy. You never know. It's really, it's like a trip, no doubt. Um, now I know where it's going to go because I want to make sure that we uh, we talk about the ship-a-thon that FedEx has uh, been kind enough to uh, give this phone call chat with you to this show. Uh, what is the FedEx ship-a-thon that's going down? The uh, ship-a-thon is what we're calling... Uh, is what FedEx is is uh, is calling basically this holiday season, just because it's going to be so many people, probably more than usual with uh, obviously the, the COVID and all this. You know, there's going to be a lot more shipping going on. So, uh, you know, we connected, and um, I, like I was teasing my lineman, there's been a few years, not every gift, but there's been maybe some of the bigger gifts to some of the guys that might not have been delivered uh, mm-hmm. on Christmas or even maybe a month or a couple months afterwards. Um, so this year, as opposed to years past, uh, you know, I shopped early and, and thanks to FedEx, we shipped it early and they got their presents even before Thanksgiving, which I know was surprising for them. So, uh, really thankful to FedEx for, uh, for helping out with that. And the ship is just, Hey, you know, this is just a good reminder. I think for everybody, it's mm-hmm. going to be super busy. So get your, get your stuff, uh, shipped as soon as possible for my linemen. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm thankful What'd you get to get them uh, the Traeger, Traeger grills and then a, a nice white glove tailor-made uh, golf club experience, which would be great for the few that golf. And I will, I must admit it is uh, almost like uh, an event uh, going golfing with those guys because mm-hmm. you never know what's going to happen. Okay, and that's FedEx.com slash Holiday Guide. Uh, now I need to figure out what I'm getting the guys here at the Rich Eisen Show because you just kind of – set the bar very high. Although, Aaron, um, I, I again, I didn't think I'd be bringing this up to you. Uh, I found out that the guys here on this show all ordered Lou Malnati's pizza from Chicago uh, and didn't include me. Uh, and I found that out on live television and radio last week. <laughs> and it did mess with the team chemistry, I'm not going to lie. How, do, how would you, as the uh, CEO, I guess, of your offense, handle such a thing like that, Aaron? This is no dream either. This happened. <laughs> Well, publicly shaming them would be probably the first way to go about it. <laughs> um, yep, that's always that's always a good route. To Check go. there, and then uh, with a Pro Bowl quarterback, yeah. right? With a pro, with a championship uh, MVP Pro Bowl quarterback, use use in, enlist yeah. him in that process as well. Yeah, definitely. A restriction okay. of privileges for sure. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. And then and then probably a public apology on uh, across multiple uh, social media platforms. Okay. Which already took place last week. That uh, did take place. Yes, so Actually, yeah, the way that they trolled me, Aaron, is that they did, after me bitching about it, bring in the pizzas and lay it on my desk like uh, the uh, Notre Dame team laid their jerseys on the desk in Rudy, which is the movie I hate the most because I'm a Michigan guy. So they actually trolled me in trying to make amends. It just doesn't stop. Wait. Let me just let me just make you feel better because yes. uh, that was one of my favorite movies growing up, and I've since learned – from a former coach of mine who played in Notre Dame, that that never happened. <sighs> so there's many parts of that movie that never actually happened. Like Vince Vaughn throwing the halfback pass to give Rudy a chance to run down a kickoff. Never right. happened. Fake. What else? Please yeah. keep going. This does make me feel much better. You have no idea how much this makes me feel <laughs> this better. Is, this is helping. Anything man. else? Anything else that you know that's false? Well, yeah, I don't think John Favreau actually married that girl. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Okay. He left her for somebody uh, a little better looking, I think. Okay. And the guy who played rock wasn't slow clapping outside either. He wasn't doing that slow clap. Okay. Very good. This is good. Yeah, that never happened either. Thank you, Aaron. You have made me feel better, and I appreciate the call. Have a great Thanksgiving holiday, and uh, let's chat down the road. Always enjoy our chats. Look forward to it, buddy. Maybe maybe we'll talk about uh, Game of Thrones and uh, and the offshoot coming out with uh, starring Arya. Okay. Are you going to be in that? You already got a role in that. That everyone in the everyone in the uh, uh, the Twitterverse is going to inaccurately describe as your role. You're going to have something like that. I mean, I sent in. Yeah, I sent in my my reel from the office uh, just to remind them that I can actually act a little bit. So mm-hmm. hopefully, that might give me uh, give me some serious time. Okay. In the meantime, uh, uh, you've got the Chicago Bears in front of you. So good luck with that, and we'll chat down the line. Thanks again, Aaron. Always appreciate it, brother. Thanks, guys. You got it. That's Aaron Rodgers. That Aaron Rodgers twelve.
Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.